Hi, my name is Bruce Busby, president of Roots Magic, and I'm going to take off a few minutes from programming here to do another demo on how to use the new task feature in Roots Magic 8. Now, in Roots Magic 8, we now have a feature called tasks, and tasks are going to replace what were, used to be to-do items, research logs, those types of things in earlier versions of Roots Magic. If you're familiar with those items in older versions of Roots Magic, you know that to-do items could only be attached to one thing, and research logs uh, could only be attached to one thing, one person, one family, whatever. And research items could only exist in one research log. Okay, well tasks, tasks get, get rid of that limitation and allow you to create tasks that are attached to any number of other records within the Roots Magic file. So let me kind of show you, show you how that works. If I want to add a new item in my Roots Magic uh, to a new task to Roots Magic, I'm going to go up here on the Task tab and I'm going to click the plus to add a task. And I can give my task a name, my important task. And I can enter things like the start date, that I, the date I started the task, the date I most recently worked on the task, the date I finished the task, any goals or details. So this is basically going to be a free form note where I can enter anything I want about what I'm trying to achieve with this task. Results, same thing, it's a free form edit field where I can enter whatever my results were for this task, whether they were positive, negative, whatever. I can also assign a status to my task. I can say it's new, it's in progress, it's completed, it's on hold, it, there's a problem with it, or it's been canceled. I can also assign a priority from high to low, a reference number if I want to assign my own personal reference number to it. If I have a file on my computer that's tied to this task, I can attach that to the task as well and then also the task type. So I can say this is research to do or correspondence. This is totally optional. Um, you don't have to fill in that at all, or you can select it. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and save this. I'm not gonna worry about any of this other stuff for right now. I'm gonna save this. And I now have my important task right here. And I can come over here and I can make any edit, any of those fields that I want, make any changes I want to it. But in addition, I can add media items, and I'm, there's no limit. I can add as many media items to this task as I want, as many pictures, as many scanned documents, whatever, as I want to this task. I can also add as many sources or citations to this task as I want. Just click add a new source or cite an existing source, and I can add, add the source or citation right there. Same thing with addresses and repositories. Again, no limit. I can go up and say I want to add an address, or I can say select an existing address, and I can add that information right there. Now you'll also see where it says used. This is showing me where or how, how many places this task is used. Right now it's not used by anybody because I just created it. But if I were to click on that, this would slide in a list of every place that this task is used. Okay, I can also go in and add web tags to this task as well. I can come up here and add a web tag to this task. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop out over to the people and I'm gonna go into Willard Miller here. And I'm gonna open up his edit screen and I've got him highlighted, the person row is highlighted and I have, oops, I have the option to add a task to the person. So I'm gonna say add a task I can go in and right here I can enter a new task if I'd like to, start just fill it in and click OK. Or I can say I want to select an existing task and I'm going to go ahead and select my important task right there and click OK. And I've now added my important task as a task attached directly to this person. And if I click one of these existing tasks right here, if I click that, the task actually slides right in where I can edit any of the information for that task. I can add more pictures, more sources, more addresses, repositories. You'll see right now it shows that it's used in one place because I just added it to Willard. If I click on that, you're gonna see right there, that's, that's, where it's, that's where it's being used. Now I can also go to an event. I'm gonna to go to birth and I'm going to say, 
add a task, and I want to select an existing task. I'm going to select my important task again, click OK, and I've now attached that task to his birth as well. Now I can go attach it to other things. If I go into the place, into the place list, I can go in here to, let's say, American Fork, and I want to add a task. Again, I could add a new task, or I can select an existing task, and I'm going to pick that same task, and I'm going to add my important task to this place as well. Okay, so if I go back over here into tasks now, and I highlight my important task, you'll see it now shows that it's used in three places. And if I click on that, I can see it's attached to a person, it's attached to an event, which is the person and which event, and it's attached to a place. Okay, now, if I want to do a quick and dirty search or filter on these tasks, I can come right up here to this little search, this little search window, and I can type in, let's type in green, and it's going to filter this list down to everything that has the word green in the task name. And as I move through each of these items, I can come over here and I can edit the task. When I'm done with that little quick filter, I can click the little X and bam, I'm right back to my full list of tasks. Okay, but what really makes this powerful is the ability to filter these lists. So for example, I can go up here to the, to the more options and I can say filter the tasks. And Roots Magic is going to open up my filter screen and give me all my options for filtering these tasks. Now I can filter based on the content of the task. In other words, what I've typed in for the task. So I can filter by the start date, the end date, the last edited date, the details, results, reference number, the task type, the status filters, and the priority. So basically all of those all of those things that I can enter in, I can filter by those pieces of information. They're very powerful. If I wanted to filter by a start date, I can say don't filter or only show the tasks that don't have a start date or only show tasks with a start date of and it gives me a field. Now I can enter one specific date and it's going and then click OK and it's going to filter that list and only show me tasks that started on that date. But I can also say before a date and that will give me all the tasks that started before that date or I can do after this date or I can say between date one and date two and it's going to give me all the tasks that happened between those two dates, that started between those two dates. Now, the exact same thing happens with the end date and with the edit date. Now, details, I can go into details and say don't filter or show task where the details equals this, which means only give me a list of, of tasks where the details contain exactly whatever I type here. Or I can say, show me the tasks where details contain this, and that's going to give me a list of all the tasks that actually contain that text, even if they have other stuff in them. If they contain that text, then, then they will be included in the filter. Results works exactly the same way. Reference number, the same way. Task type, I can say only show research, to do, or correspondence. And then, of course, you got your status. Now, what really makes this filter powerful, though, is this option right here, filter based on links. And what this lets me do is find all the records that are attached to a certain thing. So if I say I want to add a link filter, I can say I want to link to person, family, event, place, place detail, name, source, citation, address, repository, media, or folder. And I'll tell you about folders in just a second. So if, if I can basically say, I only want to see tasks that are attached to a particular person, select the person, and I'm going to select um, uh, Miller Willard. That's the person I added it to. So Willard Miller. I'm going to select that, click OK, and it's added that as a filter. Okay, so now if I were to click OK right now, it's going to give me a list of the tasks that are attached to Willard Carlton Miller. And there it is, my important task. 
Okay, now I can also go in, I'm gonna go ahead and clear that filter, bring everybody back, but I can also go in and say, I only want filters, I mean, I only want tasks that are attached to this place, you know, American Fork in the case of what we just did, or this place detail, or this name, or this source, or this citation, or address, or media. So what I can do is I can, I can basically get a list of the tasks that are attached to anything that I've attached them to. And I'm not limited to just one. That's why we have this plus. So I can go in and say, I want a list of my tasks that are attached to John Doe, but also are attached to American Fork. And what that's going to do is that's going to go give me a list of tasks for John Doe in American Fork, very specific. Okay, what this is basically letting me do is allows me to go in and just add a task whenever I want and then basically by filtering get completely customized research logs. Okay, so in other words, I go in and I create a task, I add a task, and I attach it to everybody that uses that task or that that task is related to, every place that that task is related to, every source or citation that place is related to, and then I just move on. When it comes time to do a research log, if I say, man, I'd like to see every, all the, my research log, I'd like to see whatever I have done uh, for you know, John Smith or Mary Smith, um, but I'd like to only see the stuff that, that I have, the tasks that I have for them in this particular, this particular place. And I can go in, set those filters, and get a list of the tasks specific to that criteria. Now, what I'm showing you here with the task filtering basically filters this list. But we also have a task report, a task list, a printed task list, which uses this exact same filtering. So I can actually get a printout of the particular uh, tasks that, that mean, actually mean something to me. Now, let's say that you're not really interested in doing it this way, that you prefer the, uh, the more simplistic way of doing a research log that Roots Magic 7 did. That is still available. Um, we have, a, have a, in addition to the list of tasks, we have a feature here called task folders. And task folders lets you create a folder, and that folder, you can give it a folder name right here, and you can give it a description. You can basically say, here's what this folder is. A, and you can think of this task folder as your research log. And once you've done that, you can then go into your task folder and you can, you can select, you can go in here and say, okay, I want to add a task. You can create a new task or you can select an existing task. You know, let's go find, and we'll just pick, pick somebody here, pick a task here, select okay. And you've now added that task to that folder. Okay, this is basically what a research log, what a research log in Roots Magic 6 and 7 comprised of was basically just a list of tasks. It was just a list of tasks for, a, you know, grouped in a certain way. And that, that's what this is letting you do. The one advantage this has, though, over a Roots Magic 7 research logs is that this task is not limited to being only in this folder or only in this research log. If this task applies to multiple research logs, I can reuse that same task in multiple research logs. Well, I hope you've... Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little short, um, this little short description of Roots Magic tasks. Again, it's it's a very powerful feature. We will do we'll do a more in depth uh, tutorials on tasks down the road because they're extremely powerful and there's more than I can just touch in just a fifteen or minute or so um, uh, video. But I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. We're getting really close. Um, we, we are, have hundreds of beta testers right now and we're bringing on more beta testers every week and we're planning on eventually in the very near future opening up a community preview on Roots Magic 8 and I hope you'll take advantage of that and until then we'll talk to you later.